and gentlemen, thank you for joining us this afternoon. We now ask that you focus your attention to center field as we recognize nine seniors who are playing their final season at the University of Tampa. Our first senior is in his fourth se season as a Spartan. He was a member of the 2022 SSC regular season and SSC tournament championship team. He was also part of the 2021 national quarterfinalist team, and most recently the 2022 national championship team that finished with a perfect record of 21-0. He's accompanied by his mother, Kathleen, graduating with a degree in communication, media, and culture. Ladies and gentlemen, Christian Ciccini. This next senior is in his third season as a Spartan. During his time at Spartan, he was a member of the, a two-time member of the SSC regular season champion and member of the 2022 SSC tournament championship team. He was also part of the 2021 national quarterfinalist team and most recent 2022 national championship team. He's accompanied by his mother Joelle and his sister Alexis, graduating with a degree in management. Ladies and gentlemen, Anthony Semino. Up next is seniors in his fourth season as a Spartan. He was a member of the 2022 SSC regular season and SSC tournament championship team, and also a member of the national quarter finalists in 2021, and a member of the 2022 national championship team. He's accompanied by his mother Karen, his father Phil, and his sister Courtney, graduating with a degree in allied health, ladies and gentlemen, Jackson Day. Our next senior is in his third season as a Spartan, and he was a member of the SSC regular season and 2022 SSC tournament championship team. He also played a key role as a member of the 2021 national quarterfinalist team, and most recently the 2022 national championship team. He's accompanied by his mother Alicia and father Paul, graduating with a master's degree in finance and marketing. Ladies and gentlemen, Ken Fitzpatrick. This next senior is in his fourth season as a Spartan. During his time at the University of Tampa, he was a two-time SSC regular season and SSC tournament champion. He was a national quarterfinalist in 2021 and was also a member of the 2022 national championship team. He's accompanied by his father, Jim, graduating with a degree in finance. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike LaPointe. This next senior is in his third season as a Spartan. He was a member of the 2022 SSC regular season and SSC tournament championship team, also part of the 2021 national quarterfinalist team, and most recently the 2022 national championship team. He's accompanied by his mother, Melissa, and father, Chris, graduating with a degree in cybersecurity, ladies and gentlemen, Brad Leonard. senior is in his third season as a Spartan. He's accompanied by his mother Debbie and father Paul. During his time at Tampa, he was a member of the SSC regular season championship team and 2022 SSC tournament championship team. Also a member of the 2021 national corporate finalist team and 2022 national championship team. Graduating with a degree in sport management, ladies and gentlemen, Nikki Palermo. Our next senior is in his second season as a Spartan after transferring from Furman University. During his time at Tampa, he was a member of the 2022 SSC regular season and SSC tournament championship team. In addition, he played a pivotal role in winning the 2022 national championship. He's accompanied by his mother, Christy, father, Tom, sister, Sophie, and brother, Austin, graduating with a master's degree in professional communication. Ladies and gentlemen, Brady Stowe. Our next senior is in his third season as a Spartan after transferring from Jacksonville University during his time at Tampa. He was a two-time SSC regular season champion and a member of the 2022 SSC tournament championship team, also part of the 2021 national champion or national quarterfinalist team, playing an important role in most recently the 2022 national championship team. He's accompanied by his father, Tucker, graduating with a master's degree in entrepreneurship. Ladies and gentlemen, Hunter Turner.
Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to these seniors who ex have excelled as student athletes in the classroom and on the playing field for the University of Tampa. Gentlemen, your contributions will leave a lasting impression on UT athletics.
It's home of your University of Tampa Spartan. This afternoon, the Spartans host Palm Beach Atlantic University. At this time, we ask that you please rise as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Fish out on each of the winner with the record of 24. Number seven, Caleb Sother. Number 12, Hunter Hockman. Number 13, Christian Bond. Number 20, Hunter Sheffield. Number 28, Ty Wright. Number 29, Neil Calkin. Number 35, Ben Leitze. Number 42, Refugio Perez. Number 77, Hunter Lizza. And number 88, Dylan Hunt. And for your University of Tampa Spartans who enter with a record of five and one. Number three, Brady Stoll. Number four, Blake Ulmer. Number 37, Kenyon Birch. Number 10, Matthew Beto. Number 11, Trajan Cannon. Number 14, Braden Williams. Number 15, Harry Kilkowski. Number 17, Hunter Turner. Number 36, Gunnar Gevelin. And number 45, Luke McEnany. Head coach of your Spartans is J.D. Clark.
Oui. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Starting goal, scored by number 20, Kellen Ho.
Phoebe will score by number 12, Hunter Hoffman. The assist to number 77, Hunter Lissa. Spartan goals go by number 37, Kenyon Kirk. Kids goals on the system. And with that, the Spartans retake the lead. Cameron Birch will get his first to the game. Barnes on the counterattack, a good save. And Lightsey, a solid start so far. I believe that's save number three on the game for him. But still, very early in the first period, I'm Taylor Storr, the Tampa Palm Beach. We'll see what Palm Beach can do as they are chasing an upset. Up top, defended well, and that is a great save there by Blake Ulmer. Tampa brings it up quickly. Almost had something open, but just not enough. And that's unfortunate. Spartans have a turnover, and that will give Palm Beach, I think, a little bit of a uh, breathing room. As whenever the Spartans have it in the offensive third, they can be pretty scary. They've averaged 15 goals a game this season. And 45 shots per game. Actually, those are last season stats. This year it's even better. 17 goals a game and 50 shots. They've only gotten better. Of course, the Spartans enter the game 5-1 and one on the season. Recently, Coach J.B. Clark took his first loss as coach of the Spartans in an upset against Frostburg State, where the Spartans took a 14-12 defeat. But after that, they immediately responded with a 20-3 victory on Wednesday against Embry-Riddle. 
Palm Beach probably saw the Frostburg State result. They want to make lightning strike twice. Up top, and this one goes away. Palm Beach will retain possession, but there won't be enough time on the shot clock to do anything. So they're just going to let the clock roll out and the Spartans regain possession. Palm Beach enters the season and game with a 1-4 record. They are coming off a window. They defeated Davison Elkins before resuming Sunshine State Conference play. They will next be facing off against Quincy, a team that Tampa has faced on the baseball diamond. That shot goes wide. Spartans reclaim possession. Also for the Spartans, they'll be home next Monday, facing off against Colorado Mesa. And by next Monday, I mean the Monday after tomorrow, on the 20th. That one's deflected away. Had a good opportunity in front of goal. But Lightsey stays strong. Oh, good interception down the middle for the Spartans. But the shot is not converted. Palm Beach will get it back. Great play by Luke McEnany. Just getting in the way there. Paul Beach bring it back up. It's actually been a relatively quiet first quarter as Palm Beach have held the Spartans to just two goals, but Tampa has continued their incredibly strong defense. Of course, it was on Wednesday, coming off the defeat to Frostburg, the Spartans only conceded three in the entire game against Embry-Riddle. That was their first taste of Sunshine State Conference play. And the game against Frostburg State was the only time this season that they actually conceded 10 goals. Gets inside, but it's going to be deflected away by Ulmer, and the defense will hold on to it. A big pass all the way up. It actually connects. The 1 2, and it's McEnany converting. The Spartans take a 3 1 lead with 3.28 to go. That was a perfect ball from Ulmer to get it to the midfield. And then a beautiful 1-2 play. Getting through the Sailfish defense. And McEnany, a wide open look to fire it past Lightsey. That's his first goal and point of the game. But that's certainly not his first of the season. He's been a key figure in that Spartan attack. And always a tough player to stop on the field. Palm Beach will get possession as we resume play. And a few changes being made for the Sailfish. Getting some rotation in. Have to see if Hotman's still on the field. He might be taking a break here. But a good start to the game for Hotman. He was the lone goal scorer for the Sailfish earlier on. Eleven shots for the Spartans, nine for Palm Beach. They're actually relatively close in the stat sheet. Palm Beach could get shot number ten in this possession here. They would just need to find an opening. Past up top. This one gets away. And despite the pressure, Calkin holds on to it. Inside, the shot deflected away. And Tampa is going to get it back. Good defense there. And Ulmer is having a great game so far. I believe that will be registered as his fifth save. Yeah. 
That also may have been registered as a wide shot potentially. But Omer doing a good job trying to keep the net clean. It's been something he's been good at throughout his entire Spartan career. Spartans just circling it around. This will probably be one of the final possessions with the shot clock as we're just about 100 seconds left in the first quarter. And Tampa once again outside. And that shot is going to go wide. Good attempt there. By Green. But it misses. Palm Beach is going to get in the way. There was a dangerous chance there from the Spartans. It looked like Kilkowski potentially had it down the middle. But three Sailfish defenders close down and get the turnover. I'll say that was an errant pass. They're lucky that there wasn't a turnover on that play as the Sailfish bring it down the field. The game clock one a second, one second ahead of the shot clock at 47 and 46. The game clock now at 42, 41, and 40. At this stage, that could be the last possession of the half. And it will continue here, 29 to go. And Tampa's going to get it. Good defense from the Spartans, and they'll have the final uh, final chance. Brought inside. Shot and scores. McEnany on the break. That's the second goal for McEnany. And this Spartans team, deadly on the counterattack. And with 10 seconds left, you probably won't have much time for any opportunities after the faceoff. There's a fight. I think the Spartans will come away with it. But with five seconds left, they would need a full field pass. And that one's going to go wide to end the first quarter. The Spartans take the early advantage. Good defense all around. We'll enter the second quarter with a 4-1 Spartan lead. And we will be back Folks, after the break. Wayne State Medical School has been my dream medical school since I was five. Athletics are important, but so is service, so is research, so is becoming a better person. And we expect you to do well athletically, but don't forget the reason you're here, which is to give back to your community and to get good grades.
Community Engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student-athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student-athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student-athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after-school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community... And we are back. Palm Beach will take the face off here, but Tampa is able to win it back. If you're just joining us, I'm Taylor Store, the welcome back to Tampa Spartans Lacrosse. The Sailfish defense did concede four in the first quarter, but against the Spartans, that's generally a good start as they're a team that has averaged 17 goals a game. Their weakest outing came in their only loss where they scored 12 goals. There's still time for Palm Beach to try them out a comeback, but the Spartans' defense has been pretty good this season. They've only conceded 10 goals once. And in Sunshine State Conference play, they've recently held Embry-Riddle to three. Sailfish can get an early opportunity. They almost lose it. I believe Hotman was dispossessed. The early goal scorer will now pick it up again. A good crowd here at the Namoli Family Stadium. An intramural complex. The shot goes wide. Palm Beach retain. Palm Beach back up top. And that one was very cleverly intercepted there by Geblin. A very good pass all the way up from Ulmer. Great at distribution. The one, two. And the Sailfish were able to recover. The Spartans have scored a few times on those breakaways. Played inside. And that is a seriously nice solo goal. Bombstead was looking for a friend, looking for someone to help him out. Doesn't see anyone, so he says, well, hey, why don't I try it myself? And I think that's a lesson. Trust yourself because you'll find the back of the net. Tampa takes a 5-1 lead. So great job for Bombstead. Twelve forty-three to go in the second quarter. Spartans once again on the attack. It was certainly a little closer in the first quarter, but Tampa would like this to be a stress-free final three. Palm Beach want to keep upset dreams alive, and here they'll bring it back up. Their number nine's just going to dish it off. Smart play is nothing was open for him. A few more changes for both sides as Palm Beach will hold it, ready to enter the attacking third. Adams sends it wide. Tampa's defense not giving a lot of room. There's an opening. And this one is going to be won back by the Spartans. But it's picked back up again by the Sailfish. They had a lot of pressure by the out-of-bounds line. If 
from the top. Adams just looking for any window. They'll take a shot, but it's gonna be out. Liza will reclaim the ball. 42 to go on the shot clock. Sean and Ulmer gets on top of it. Good save, he actually couldn't find the ball for a second, but he does come up with it now. A long pass all the way down, picked up on the run, brought inside, and this one's a nice save that I believe also then ricocheted off a player. Good idea from Badeau, Spartans will hold it as they make a few changes. They only have three attackers, and here comes two more. Finally, a sixth player up. The shot and scored, it's a hat trick. I was gonna say if that was McEnany, that would have been a hat trick, but that was just the two numbers off the number from Owen Miller, who will get his first goal of the game. It could be a little confusing because Tampa has quite a few goal scorers that wear numbers in the 40s. McEnany with two goals, Bombstead with a goal and assist, and that for Owen Miller is a goal to put the Spartans up 6-1. Well, here's Miller once again on the break. This time I got confused. There was no four. The four came in the amount of seconds we had between goals. Poma picked up the face off and brought it all the way down to put the Spartans up by seven. The Spartans number seven gives the Spartans the seventh goal. I would not be surprised if we see a timeout in a minute or two from Palm Beach conceding two goals in the span of five seconds. I don't have the record book for fastest back-to-back -back goals, but that may be up there. Poma picks it up, and Tampa again will have a dangerous opportunity. They'll slow it down, but I know Coach D.B. Clark certainly won't mind two quick goals to really give them some breathing distance as we're now just under 10 minutes to go in the second quarter and the first half. Miller, the shot wide. Tampa regains possession. Miller back up top. Miller unloads this one saved by Lightsey. That's his fourth save of the game. And two players going down. And the Spartans will hold on to it. Passed up top. And oh, McEnany tried something fancy. He received the ball at a weird angle, so he's forced to go a literal behind the back shot right at point blank, but it goes wide. McEnany braving some contact and scores! McEnany had an initial opportunity, got shoved, holds onto it, gets back settled, and then fires a bullet past Lightsey. And now I can say that's his hat trick. The Spartans are up 8-1. In the span of 80 seconds, the Spartans have scored three. 8.56 to go in the second quarter. And Tampa is playing more like the Spartans that Coach Clark and the fancy are know and love. Ruthless, merciless, and downright devastating.
That's a good move to open some space. But he will just circle it. And Spartans try again from the top. Brought inside, still holding on to it. The shot off the post. I believe that was McEnany. Another great attempt. And on the play, we actually saw, as he was trying to win it back, number 13 for Palm Beach lose his stick in the fray. But the good news for Christian Bond is that he's got it back, and he's back on defense. The Spartans, though, still hold it. They've got under 40 seconds on the shot clock. Play behind. And the Sailfish are going to get a loose ball here. And they will now, I think... Yes, they will regain possession. They force it. Got in the restricted area right in front of the net. Spartans won't be happy with that turnover. Palm Beach will be ecstatic. They'll finally get back up into the offensive third. It's been about a few minutes since they've even had the opportunity to do so. Brought inside, but nothing's open. So they're still gonna circle it outside. Oh, that would have been an opportunity. He was unguarded, but just can't make the play to catch it. And now 20 seconds on the shot clock. Palm Beach running low on time in this possession. Now they'll rip run and score from the top of the key. And you can tell that Joshua Turner is absolutely loving that goal. 6.21 to go in the second quarter. The gap is still pretty favorable for the Spartans. But all you need is one, and that's where you can start to build some momentum. Palm Beach will get it back here. Braving some pressure from Williams. And we will get a timeout. The Sailfish want to regroup, talk it over, and try to carry some positive vibes after that previous goal from Turner. 6.09 left in the second. We'll be back right after this. Palm Beach will hold on to it as they just took the time out. They are ready to resume play. And I do have to say, Palm Beach should be careful here as everyone is getting back to position. If the Spartans had quickly got a turnover and decided to run up the field, they had a 5-10 second window <laughs> that they might have been able to really catch them off guard. 
Now everyone's in position and ready. So the quick save from Ulmer and distribution now allow a more relaxed attack for the Spartans. A couple good passes, but that one just high from Geblin. Tampa regains possession, though. And they still only have three up as they're making changes. And here comes the rest, including Owen Miller. Miller's going to get it again. Miller with some room, and he scores. It's a 9-2 lead for the Spartans, and Miller picks up a brace. That's his second goal of the game. Number 47, Owen Miller. His goal was an assist. Five sixteen to go in the second quarter. And by the way, Tampa currently leads eight to four on faceoffs. Let's see if that number will go up for the Spartans or up for the Sailfish. The answer looks to be the Sailfish, but the Spartans will ultimately come away with it. Oh, they had a good opportunity, but just misses the pass over to Palma. Good news is the Spartans were on top of it, and they'll have another opportunity here. It's been a great game for the Spartans to open up. Palm Beach was certainly better in the first quarter, although they did score defensively. They weren't perfect, and Tampa took full advantage I think the big moment came when Poma helped convert to give the Spartans two goals within five seconds. That one goes out of play on the pass. Palm Beach gets it back. Not a good turnover for the Spartans. I believe that'll be recorded as their sixth of the game to be tied with the Sailfish. 25 shots for the Spartans, 17 for Palm Beach. Nine of those shots from Palm Beach were on goal, while 13 of the Spartans' 25 were on goal. Blake Omer has seven saves with two conceded. Lightsey has four saves, nine conceded. I don't think Light, uh, Lightsey has done much wrong so far. It's just been tough to face the Spartans' attack. Palm Beach holding on to it. A little open space. 25 seconds on the shot clock. This one gets loose and the Spartans will take it. And that's a good run getting all the way up the field. One, two, yeah. goal! The fourth for McEnany, and the Spartans strike on the counter once again. Luke McEnany, not Owen. <laughs> but I will say for Owen, if he's trying to chase McEnany and goal score today, he'd still need two more. Tampa gets it quickly off the faceoff. Great job by Palma to win it again. Three minutes to go in the second quarter. The Spartans have scored six. And they'd like a seventh in the quarter. Palm Beach has been held to just one goal and they've had a lot fewer chances than they did in the first quarter. That one's going to get wide and out of play. Another unfortunate turnover. Bombstead was not able to get it. I don't think the referee was in the way. But it can be hard sometimes. And you can hear some boos from the Spartans crowd here. An 
And again, a lot of Spartans fans here today. Played inside and scored. There was no defense and no pressure on Pascarella. So he says, don't mind if I do. Spartans lead 11 to two. 2.08 to go in the second quarter. The score entering halftime in Tampa's victory over Embry Riddle was eight to one or eight to two. Tampa has already got 11. It was an eight goal third period and quarter. That was huge in securing their victory. That could have been goal number 12 in the game, but just goes wide. Spartans will retain possession. The Spartans had 63 shots in that most recent victory. They send it back to Miller, and he fires from distance. 12-2, Spartans lead. That's the second hat trick of the game, and it's Miller picking it up. I believe for Miller, he scored all three of his goals so far in the second quarter. So that's great for him. He came on and immediately fell in the back of the net. That's another two goals within 30 seconds for the Spartans. And play will be set to resume here. Poma, nine for 10 on faceoffs. He has been great for the Spartans. And Ulmer was there to help bring it up before as the Spartans once again, looking for another opportunity. The shot clock, just six seconds ahead of the game clock. This will likely be one of the final attacks of the half. Set up top again. This one just misses. It'll be picked up at the top again. That time, Spartans, one, two. Great fluid ball movement, and the shot inside. It's a score, and it's 13 to two. Great play there by the Spartans, number 13, Jackson Bashaw, the freshman from Jupiter. We'll convert that time. And for the Spartans, it's nine on the second quarter. A very great offensive display. The last time, one of the last times they scored nine in a quarter was in the first quarter against Wilmington, where they got nine. To take an early lead, that would be a very easy victory. And from what I've seen, it's the only time they've scored nine this season in a quarter. I know Coach Clark will be happy to see them with such a dominant advantage. Brought inside, the shot misses. And the loose ball recovered from the Spartans. They've got 10 seconds. Passed around, this one goes a little too far and that'll end the half. The Spartans explode late here. It was close to start, but not as close now. 13 to two as we enter the break. We'll be back within 10 minutes for the start of the second half.
You know what 13 and 2 equals? 15. And you know what 13 and 2 is? The current score. Tampa had an explosive second quarter, scoring 9, and they hold a 13 to 2 lead as we enter the second half. A good day from Blake Ulmer has kept this game from being closer. Palm Beach still trying to find out how to break him. Here's the face off. And Palma fighting, but he will actually lose. It's only the second time he's lost a face off in the game. Shot from Palm Beach deflected up. Great defense from the Spartans. Oh, and that is a rough check. I think fair play on that. Now nah, they're going to say that was too hard. No penalty, but Spartans will get the ball back. And you can tell Badeau was excited, and the referee says, no, 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 just take your time. He was leaving a little too early, as now Blake Omer brings it up. Omer reminds me a lot of the Manchester City goalie in Ederson, a type of goalie who's not only good at making saves, but great at distributing the ball up the field. Two different sports, but you can see the similarities for the men in net. Played down low. Fighting the pressure, shoots and scores. A really nice solo play from Bullish. And Bullish will give the Spartans the opener in the second half. The senior from Syracuse in the midst of his final season likely as a Spartan. He's already a national champion, part of last year's side. I know he's excited at the Spartans' big success here. Ready to resume, 13.56 on the clock. And Palma loses the fight again. Palm Beach finally getting a few face-offs to go their way. But Tampa's defense immediately all over the ball. And they will win it back. Played up for the Spartans. Picks it up, gets by his defender, and Tampa will hold on to it. Now running off the bench, bullish looking, firing. Won't score that time, it's gonna go wide, but Tampa picks it up again. Played around. Takes it and, ooh. From this angle, it looked like it went in, but I think it just took a weird bounce. Well, that one you can tell it went in. Good recovery for the Spartans, and they are now leading 16 to two. I'm pretty sure that was Miller on the game with his fourth. by number 47, Owen Miller. It indeed was Miller. I mentioned earlier that Miller would need two goals to tie McNaney, and they now both share the lead in the game with four. Homa back in the faceoff circle. McCoon has had his number the last two times they've been one on one. And he'll actually beat him again. But Poma and the rest of the Spartans in the midfield are able to fight and win it back. Poma picks it up up top. Gonna send it out wide. And by the way, the game is still underway. Not sure if we'll have to correct the clock there, but for a few seconds, the clock was actually stuck at 12:55. So interesting there, but. I know eventually you might be moving to a running clock. I believe that comes into play in the fourth quarter. I'm not, if I'm mistaken, 12.30 to go.
Played around. That shot gets deflected. Good defense from the Sailfish. Sailfish on the counter, but Tampa is able to get back in time, slow things down. And the Spartans regain possession. And here they come. And they score again. Sharing the love. We see Fitzpatrick getting it this time. Great for him. The senior who this spring will be graduating with a master's degree in finance and marketing will also be able to celebrate a goal. That's his first of the game. That's his third point of the game, though. He was able to record two assists. He only trails Miller and McEnany in the points category. And an absolute cluster over the ball. And the Spartans will come away with it. Brought inside. This time it's saved. The rebound will go Palm Beach's way, though. But great job by Lightsey to get in front of that. It's been not the perfect outing for him in the net. But he has a very tough job facing this Spartans defense and offense, sometimes at the same time. Thirty-six to nineteen shots. Tampa recently really shooting ahead in that category. Palm Beach brings it inside. Send it back up top. This one misses and Tampa gets in front of it. I think that was wide and wasn't an Ulmer save. Would have been his 10th of the game if so. Tampa brings it back up. Tampa working it around. Still looking, 35 to go in the shot clock and counting down. And that one gets dispossessed. Here comes Palm Beach again, four on four. And now wall six back up for each team. Nine minutes left in the third quarter. The shot, Ulmer picks it up with a save and he's gonna come away with it. He's able to get it away from the pressure. This one all the way up, it's gonna be deflected away. Palm Beach bringing it up again. Beautiful day and Spartan sports happening all over campus. In fact, around now you can tune in as well. 
We want to go split stream. Tampa Baseball is opening up a doubleheader. Both teams, some of the top in D2 in their sports. Obviously, I'd have to give lacrosse a little more credit as I think a stronger side. I think they do have a better winning percentage overall in the last, I'd say, 30 games if you count it. But naturally, you will lose a few more games in the baseball season than in the lacrosse season. I know for J.B. Clark, he hopes that that one is the only one that stays on the Spartans record all year. Shot saved by Ulmer again. And Ulmer with a good pass all the way up. He's going to get dispossessed here. And that one is going to be out of bounds. It was an attempt by Cannon to keep it in play. And I will say what happened, which was really funny, as Andre Pyatt, who's up here with me, mentioned, he dropped his stick on the field of play when he was going out of bounds to try to keep the play alive. But unfortunately, the referee did rule that out of bounds. Because the ball was still on his stick. It was still there. Palm Beach now will have it. Send it around. I think we have seen a little rotation for the Spartans. Gradually making a few changes. And Palm Beach finds the back of the net. South Earth that time. It's still a big lead for the Spartans. But South Earth is able to get on the score sheet here. They convert on their 23rd shot of the game and their 14th attempt on goal. homer has been a hard goalie to beat, but Palm Beach will find back in the net. They've scored in every period so far. That's a streak that Embry Riddle wasn't able to continue in the fourth quarter. Here come the Spartans again. Pass it out wide. Fifty seconds on the shot clock for the Spartans. Got plenty of time to find something. And that shot's going to go wide. It was a good idea there by Fitzpatrick to take it himself. Just couldn't get it in the back of the net. Miller holding on to it. Wrapping behind the net. Fitzpatrick again. Sends it back up top. Doing a good job just holding and distributing. Waiting until they find a shot they really like. That was going to be the chance they liked. But I believe Lightsey interfered. Well, not interfered. He was able to interfere on the scoring chance, not in terms of a penalty. But the Spartans, who get the rebound, also get a goal. I do have to, I think, be sort of mentioning that. I'm 99% sure if Coley can't give interference on himself. <laughs> Rather, he was able to disrupt the point-blank shot. It wasn't enough as Miller would later get a long-range shot. 17-3. to Five oh six to go in the third quarter. Palm Beach win the faceoff, and the shot's going to go wide. Palm Beach should retain possession. We're now just barely under five minutes to go in the third quarter. For the Spartans, they have a long stretch of Sunshine State Conference play. 
Their next out-of-conference game will be their regular season finale on Saturday the 23rd against, whoop. All right, wrong. Their next game, that's out of conference actually, will be very soon on the 20th. Got confused, I was looking at last year's schedule. The site unfortunately had loaded the wrong page. Spartans bring it back up. With a lead like this, the Spartans can afford to take some time off the clock. Work on their distribution, which they're already very good at. This one gets through a few defenders. I don't think it was tipped. That shot, that one might have been tipped or just missed by a mile, the Spartans. No matter the case, they'll regain it with 26 and 25 to go on the shot clock. That keeps counting down. It's looking more like an NBA shot clock at this time. Shoots and deflected away. That'll be a full reset off the save. Good play by Lightsey, and Tampa will hold it again. Up top. Inside. And that one, I think, went in. Wow. That's a really tough angle. I think it may have bounced off the top of the goal post and down inside. And Tampa scores again as their fifth of the period. McEnany with his fifth of the game, tied with Miller. Spartans leading goal scorers. Three ten to go. Swords fans showing some good energy. Again, I've already mentioned a great showing today. For both teams. And Tampa finds the back of the net again. That's their sixth goal of the period. Go by number 24, Evan Gibbs. And Gibbs gives the Spartans two in a minute. It's going to be Toshev in the circle again, ready for the faceoff. Spartans, one away from reaching the 20 score line that they had in their victory against Embry Riddle. way back the Spartans holding on to it <laughs> and Spartans just holding it around looking passed inside and again, great passes back and forth. <laughs> All the way up top here for the Spartans. Getting close to potentially 
having this as the final possession with the shot clock. Hold on for just five more seconds, they will. In five seconds, this one gets away, so the Spartans won't be able to get a shot off. And with one minute, seven to go, Palm Beach may have the final opportunity of the third quarter. But even with a huge lead, the Spartans gonna put the pressure on. This pass goes wide. Blake Ulmer wasn't fully in position, but he's there in the interception. Playing more like a defender right now on the run. He's gonna bring it up. And Tampa has it with 40 seconds to go. The shot clock's irrelevant. The game clock will expire a lot sooner. They might hold it out and try to get potentially a buzzer beater. Well, 15 minutes and 20 seconds left to play with a quick break in short time. Will the Spartans find a goal with 10 to go? That one just misses. Spartans will get it back with five seconds. That was a very, very sharp angle. Trying to get it in the back of the net. Brought inside, fired and saved. And the save there by Conklin who's coming to the game will end in the quarter. 19 to three Spartans on fire again. About 15 minutes to go right after the break. They make a difference in the lives of others. In Division Two, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement. And it's the fourth quarter. 15 minutes to go between Palm Beach and Tampa. Naturally, it's not over until it's over. But at this stage, it would be very difficult to call it a jinx to say that the Spartans have pretty much got this one in the bag. That's, I think at this stage, what I can say about the scoreline. But as Tampa brings it up, I expect that it'll eventually keep rotating in, bringing in some younger players, players to come off the bench. Palm Beach can do the same, get them some experience, because those types of players are the future for our programs. And just misses the shot. He already did see a change for Palm Beach, as Lightsey was given a breather. And 
they brought in Conklin. Tampa's done the same. As Ulmer takes a breather and the point enters for the fourth quarter. Palm Beach bring it up. They've got 25 shots in the game with 15 on goal. That prompted 12 saves from Omer. And we'll see if LaPointe be able to add a few of his own to the tally. 30 seconds on the shot clock. This one goes out of play. Clock resumes, play resumes. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Shot and saved by LaPointe. While Tampa can really do some magic off the break, I have a feeling they may elect to try to slow down the pace a little more than usual. And again at this stage, they've got a lead. They just like to hold on to it. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Spartans at point blank. This one saved by Conklin. And Paul Beach will bring it back up. Palm Beach playing pretty spread out. No one really sitting inside. Now a few players are moving around. Similar to an isolation playing basketball. I think they were trying to maybe potentially leave a hole open for a shot or a potential drive to the net. I think one of the cool things about lacrosse is how much of a hybrid it is of a lot of sports. From playing on a field similar to soccer, having some similar aspects to hockey, but also running with a shot clock like basketball. It would be cool if there was a two point line in lacrosse. That's just gonna be one point of course, and for Palm Beach, that's gonna be one they'll like they find the back of the net. A great goal there. Slow, steady, wins the race. 10.30 to go in the first, fourth quarter. It's a great job for Adams there. He had three shots previously, hadn't converted. Fourth time lucky. Tampa, however, responds with the face-off win.
Spartans played inside. And they'll pick it up, but the quick opportunity wasn't there. Thirty seconds left on the shot clock. That shot goes wide. And right there to keep possession for the Spartans is number fifty-four, Josh Gallia, sophomore from Wayne, New Jersey. I think that shot was deflected, but no matter what, that will kill the shot clock, and it's gonna be Palm Beach regaining possession. Under nine minutes to go in the game. And again, if you're joining us, Tampa has had a great game so far. Palm Beach have had a stronger start in the fourth quarter. They have the only goal so far. But obviously, both teams playing a little slower, working a little more methodically, especially for the Spartans, as they've also rotated quite a few of the players, including LaPointe, who's in goal, already has recorded a couple saves. Actually, the stat sheet says none, but he did have a save earlier that I think just got missed on the field. It's a shame if that can't be added after. Played inside for Palm Beach. Good pressure there. He's going to go down in the shot, which was open. Can't be taken. 15 to go on the shot clock. Played around. That's a good pass, but the shot will miss and the clock will expire. 7.40 to go. We already mentioned, but Tampa Lacrosse will return next Monday on the 20th. You'll face Colorado Mesa, another out of conference game. Their next conference game is going to be on April 1st, an April Fool's road trip to Rollins. Forty-five on the shot clock. Spartans content to work around. They look for an opening. That one's behind the net and will be picked up by Conklin. He was immediately pressured by two Spartan attackers and had to fling it behind him. Thankfully, there was only two. And Palm Beach gets it back. Played up top, spun around, it's going to get dispossessed here. Spartans defense looking to limit those opportunities that the Sailfish might get. Seventeen, sixteen, fifteen on the shot clock, and still going down. Palm Beach running out on time to get a shot off, and good Spartan defense. But two flags on the play, and that certainly is a penalty on the Spartans. Otherwise, they would have stopped play immediately. Five twenty-seven to go in the game. There was a lot of contact and a lot of players going down, so not a surprise to see it. We'll see just how long it is when it's called up.
Play resumed, it's a 30 second penalty on the Spartans number 38. Uh, the only problem is we, uh, the roster sheets we have don't have a 38, so someone is wearing a different number today. So mystery number 38 is currently in the box. He's got 15 seconds left. No matter what, Palm Beach will still have the man advantage for 15 more seconds. But in fact, even longer is another penalty for the Spartans. This time it was a minute long for number 25 as LaPointe is going to deflect this one upward. So Thomas Gribben is going to join 38. I believe that was Stone Conley, number 38. That's uh, at least what they're calling Conley Stone, but he's 22 and not 28. Palm Beach still holds the advantage of one player. Tampa has it on the attack. It's a common practice sometimes, I think, for sports, uh, Spartan Sports Beast to exchange numbers for different games. There can be issues with uniforms, and they have to do that. I know Ashton Polkel has uh, been the 37 or 39, depending on uh, certain days for baseball. That's very likely a similar spot here, which can kind of leave us get guessing up in the booth. Four minutes to go, even strength for both teams. And under 30 seconds on the shot clock, as Tampa just, again, taking their time, working it around. 19 to four lead for the Spartans. Play inside and scores. No, I think they rolled off the back of the net. That got us confused. And there were a few cheers for the Spartans crowd. They thought just as I did. But it rolled off of the net, not into the net. Shot clock expires. Just three minutes to go in the game. And Tampa, for all intents and purposes, will be leaving with a six and one record. For Palm Beach, it'll be one and five. But again, facing the number six team in the nation, Palm Beach, I think, can give them some credit. For at the very least, currently leading in the fourth quarter in terms of goals scored. That one misses. Spartans regain possession, 240 to go. 160 seconds left to play. 80 seconds on the shot clock. If both the shot clocks expired, the game would end on Palm Beach's final possession. Here's Tampa, still looking, under 40 to go on the shot clock. Under two minutes to go on the game clock. That'll expire the shot clock, 119, 79 seconds to go in the game. So the shot clock is no longer necessary. The game clock would end a second beforehand. 
Let's see if Palm Beach can find anything on what might be the last attack of the day. A consolation goal, a prize to get a fifth. It'll be the first time Palm Beach has had two goals in a period in the entire day. That one goes wide, but picked up. Thirty seconds and counting. Tampa still fighting. Will they get it? It is a mad scramble with 20 to go, but Palm Beach will come away with it. Open look up top. And that one goes out, 10 seconds to go. Tampa can heave it up, but that'll definitely be all to finish out this game. The Spartans bring it up with five, four, three, two, and the Spartans take the victory. 19-4, another big Sunshine State Conference victory for Tampa. And they will start this weekend day for the Spartans with a win. You can tune in to Spartans baseball going on at the same time. They're in the midst of a doubleheader. But for now, that'll conclude Spartans lacrosse. J.B. Clark continues the recovery. Another massive win. McEnany, Miller. On fire with 10 goals combined, five goals each. They both outscored Palm Beach in the game. Palm Beach did have Hotman score twice, Southard score once, and Turner score once. Lightsey had six saves, Conklin had two saves, Ulmer had 12 saves. The point wasn't given a save, but I think he actually did have one or two. But congrats again to the Spartans. See them next time on the 20th live on TampaSpartans.tv at home. And again, thank you for tuning in on.